What's up guys, Brian here in the Gecko Lab once again. Thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna show you how to build a really cool and simple custom background for your terrarium. So this is a really neat and easy way to make a background in your terrarium, to make an overall terrarium that looks a lot better than the cheap foam backgrounds that these things come with or just trying to hang some plants on the back. And it gives a solid back, which makes it a lot easier to make good hiding spots for your animals so they feel more comfortable. So if you guys didn't see uh, one of my recent videos where I showed you the rack that I built that I'm gonna put a bunch of cages on, this is gonna be the first cage that I'm gonna build for this project that we're gonna kinda do together, where I'm gonna build out a bunch of these custom glass cages in all these really cool ways, and then you guys get to tell me what you think I should put in them and help me acquire some new species to play with. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. This is an Exoterra 12 by 12 by 12 inch cube cage. I'd like to put a breeding pair of some sort of really small micro gecko in here. I haven't decided yet. So, when I get this built out, if you have an idea for what you think I should put in this cage, comment down below, let me know what species you think I should put. But let's get into this real quick, real easy custom background. This is the list of things you're gonna need. Obviously a terrarium to build out, like I said, 12 by 12 by 12 inch cube. Most people are gonna be using something a lot bigger because most geckos need a bigger cage. You will also need a tube of either black or brown silicone. You will need a can of great stuff. Most of this stuff you can find at a hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that. You're gonna want a box of vinyl gloves or latex gloves or whatever kind of just disposable gloves. Uh, I've got a piece of cork bark and a piece of grape vine that we're going to use. And then also a bag of some sort of dirt. The shredded cocoa fiber works good. This repti soil works really good. Anything real fine grain is gonna work fine. So that is the uh, list of things that you'll need to build out a background like this, let's go ahead and get started on the first step. So the first thing you wanna do is, the great stuff is what you spray in the cage and that kind of sticks all of your decorations and builds the 3D texture of the background. The trouble is, this stuff is about the same color as the cap here. It's super ugly. Now the front of it we're gonna cover so it looks natural, but that leaves the back of the cage. When you cover the back wall of this cage with great stuff, the back wall is the same color as this. It just looks really bad. So this step is optional, but I always do it because I like the cages to look better, is you cover the back of the cage in just a thin layer of brown or black silicone. And I always go about two inches up on each side just to make sure I've got room for the great stuff to expand and hold the decorations on there and you don't see it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, as you can see, we've got that base layer of silicone on the background done. You wanna let that dry overnight. It's really important that this gets fully dry before you move on to the next step. So I'm here the next day. This has been sitting all night, let it dry out. Next step is to use your great stuff. Now this is a construction material. You just pick it up at any hardware store and you use this to attach your background pieces. I've got a piece of cork bark here that we're gonna use as well as a grapevine to make a climbing spot. And basically what you do is you just hold this up against the background where you want it, and then you use the great stuff to kind of use this as an adhesive to glue it in. The real important part is you see how the cork bark is usually concave like this. You wanna make sure that you fill all the holes all the way around so it's a flush fit and there's no way your gecko can get behind here. Otherwise it could get trapped back here. It could just crawl back there and you can't get it out if you need to for whatever reason. So you just wanna be mindful of that when you're attaching your decorations. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now that we've let this sit for a couple hours, the great stuff foam doesn't take as long to dry as the silicone does. So a couple hours later, we've let this sit and you can see this great stuff, it dries pretty hard. It's still a little squishy, but it basically dries firm. And as you can tell, it expands a lot as it dries. So that means because it dried hard, you can tell this stuff is not coming out. My sticks, the background, it's not coming out, but we do need to trim it down partly because it's now expanded 
too high over the top, we can't put the lid on. And also, if you want to shape it, you can kind of carve it down and shape the foam into whatever look or shape or texture that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. It's the easiest way to do it. You have to be really careful, but I just use a razor blade, uh, just a normal razor blade, hold it by hand, and it slices through this foam really easy. You just have to be careful not to cut yourself, obviously. Um, you know, basic disclaimer, if you're younger, have an adult help you, that kind of thing. If you're not comfortable with it, use something that you are comfortable with. Exacto knives work, but they take a little longer. Whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm gonna go ahead and shave this down now so we can get on to the next step. All right, now that we've got that shaved down and shaped to the texture that we want it, I've got the cage sitting here on its back. And the next step is to cover all of that yellow great stuff foam in more of that same black or brown silicone that we used on the back. So the idea here is you cover all of that, all of that foam with silicone because it's ugly and it's yellow. So we want to make it better looking. You cover it in silicone and while it's still wet, while it's fresh and wet, you pour soil over it and you very gently pat soil down onto it and then you let it sit for another full day. And when the silicone dries, the soil sticks to it. So what you end up with is a really nice, beautiful, naturalistic looking textured background and that soil just sticks on there forever. So let's go ahead and get that started. I'm gonna cut the top of this off. I am going to cover all this with silicone and we will finish this project up. Well, now that we've made a right proper mess of everything, this guy is siliconed up. We've put all the dirt there on top, patted that dirt down, and I'm just gonna let this cage sit here for a day or two. Uh, I really like to let all the dirt sit on top of that silicone so it sticks the maximum amount. It gets the max amount of dirt to stick on that silicone, but having all that dirt on top means it takes the silicone a while to dry. So I'm probably gonna leave this here for two days or so, let it dry, and then we'll tip it up knock all the extra loose dirt off and see how it looks. All right guys, it's been a couple days. I've still got our dirt sitting on top of the silicone here. It's time to finish putting this cage together. Now, I've got together the rest of our supplies. We're gonna need to finish this off. First up, I have a bag of pillow moss. This is just gonna be the top layer on this soil. Nice moss. I've got a bowl of uh, warm water to soak the moss in to brighten it up. I've got one of these mossy vines that I really like. Since this is a smaller cage, this is a six foot vine. I'm actually gonna cut it in half. We're only gonna use half of it in here to give more climbing spaces for the geckos. And I've got just a simple terrarium plant, just a real small plant. Hang it near the back and give them a little bit more coverage. So let's go ahead and get this guy finished up and put back together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just stand this cage up. Now, because there's so much extra dirt on the background that didn't dry with that silicone to stick to it, all of that extra dirt's gonna fall to the bottom and that's just what I'm gonna use as my base substrate level. So let's pick this guy up. All right, stand him up and you can kind of go through and gently brush off all of the extra dirt. Well, that doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of extra dirt in here as it's not quite as full as I would want it on the bottom. Two more handfuls of Repti soil ought to do us all right. Spread that around evenly. 
Not bad, not bad, okay. Now, we're gonna add our moss. I'm gonna take out just some chunks of our pillow moss here, soak it in the warm water. All right. Beautiful. Adding this moss to the bottom layer of the cage isn't necessary. You can definitely keep geckos right on the dirt floor. However, I really like having the moss as the bottom layer. I think it really brightens the cage up. It makes it look so much nicer. And it holds the humidity really, really well for the geckos. And that is a big plus. Perfect. Just going to add a little bit more to top that off. This piece is going to be too big, so we'll end up ripping it down to size. So, one thing I need you guys to think about to help me out with completing this project is what species are we going to put in this cage? As I said before, this is kind of a project for all of us to do together. This is the first of many, many naturalistic and some bioactive terrariums we're going to build on this channel. And you guys are going to get to have some input on not only how I build some of these cages and what themes and how you want me to make them look, but also what are we going to put in them? I'm going to have you guys help me decide what new animals I'm going to buy to fill all these cages. And this one is no exception. So Keep in mind, I need a smaller micro gecko, something that's no more than a couple inches. Obviously, this is a little cage. What do you guys think I should put in it? Next up, the mossy vine. You guys know how much I love these. How cool are these guys? And as you may have seen in previous videos, one of the keys for me to the mossy vines is I like to use these Pangea mini acrylic food ledges great for food dishes but also it gives you a great spot to wind your vine through as well so if it's needed it's really nice to have this to help hold the vine up so i'm gonna put this guy right up here at the front in case we're gonna use that for the vine i'm not quite sure if we will yet first i need to cut this vine down to size because this one is really long i do not need this much vine I'm gonna cut it about in half, just some regular pliers with wire snippers on them, because these vines do have a metal wire inside. So once you cut that, I always like to take the end that I cut because sometimes the metal wire can poke out, and that is the end that I will jam down into the substrate. And that just ensures that my geckos aren't gonna get poked on that wire. So I'm gonna wrap this guy around there. Wrap it pretty tightly around the stick and then go down through here. Wrap it pretty tightly around. Oops. Well, that fell off. Wrap that right around the food ledge. There. Perfect. As you can see, I love making these sticks that are tied into that background with the great stuff foam to come straight out and that provides a nice basking spot with a species like what I'm going to put in here it's a high chance that it's going to need a basking spot and that gives it a nice good couple places to sit right underneath the UV lights if it's a diurnal species lastly I've got just this little plant just a basic zoo med terrarium plant just to give some more coverage, to give the gecko a nice spot to hide and feel safe and comfortable. We'll just stick that right here into the back. That can hang straight down there. Oops, that's not sticking on. See, this is a problem with these plants, as I've said before to you guys. I just don't like the suction cups. They don't stay very well. Let's get it wet. Sometimes if you get them wet, they stick a lot better. That'll work. That looks good. Now I think I am gonna end up adding 
some sort of hide. I don't have anything in stock right now. I need to make a trip to the pet store, but we'll end up adding one more little hide on the front here to give them a ground level cover. And that should be it. That is gonna do it for this cage. I think it's all set up and ready to go. What do you guys think? This one's real basic, real simple, no living plants, no live terrarium, just a nice dirt floor, some moss to hold the moisture and a decent looking background to look naturalistic. Some of this dirt will continue to fall down off the background as you spray it with water and the geckos climb around in it whenever we put some animals in it. But let me know what you guys think down below. First cage we're gonna build, they're gonna get more complex, bigger, more intricate as we go. This is our first one, and very importantly, tell me what you think we should put in here. I need to know what you guys think we should stock this with, what geckos or lizards or anything, really. I'm open to all kinds of different species. What should I buy to put in this first cage? Thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate you joining me today. Let me know down below what's gonna go in this cage, and I will see you soon. I am Brian, altitudeexotics.com, that's slash AE Geckos on Facebook and Instagram. Give us a follow. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you.